Okay, number four uh, is this idea, uh, which is ongoing, that we need to restore uh, balance, that we've upset the, the balance or equilibrium of nature, um, but that we can return to it uh, in future if, if appropriate steps are taken. This belief is very much supported in New Zealand uh, by this notion that our environment is Gondwan in, in character, uh, that it hasn't changed ma- much in the last 80 million years, or if it has changed, it's changed only very slowly and incrementally. This notion of balance came through again extremely strongly during my PhD research and was commonly reflected in people's attitudes towards introduced species. And that's a little surprising, of course, because the idea of balance or equilibrium fell out of favour in ecological literature as early as the 1970s and the 1980s, yet it remains extremely popular both amongst the public and even still among many scientists. Uh, And that's partly because the myth that there is a balance of nature is part of most cosmologies and it's central to a lot of religious beliefs. The idea of balance also imagines this orderly, predictable little world that we can control and that we can manipulate if we can only get our hands on this ever-elusive instruction manual. So it provides that, uh, that means that we can use nature for our, for our ends. So exploring this notion of ecological balance, uh, biogeographer Stephen Trudgell recently wrote, uh, and I quote here, the balance of nature is untenable when faced with evidence, but the idea is a strong article of faith. In Western society, we readily reach for an Edenic myth of humans causing disharmony in the natural order of things. We shoulder the guilt-laden notion that we've disturbed the natural order and it's now all wrong, it's all our fault. This becomes very much a situating narrative and a personal motivation. In contrast, the consolidating flux of nature or disequilibrium paradigm emphasises that most ecosystems are actually characterised by uh, unpredictability, dynamism and constant change. As American ecologist Mark Davis recently put it, and by the way, this is the author of the textbook on invasion biology, the natural world is more like a swirling and boiling cauldron than an integrated superorganism. Our environments in New Zealand really epitomise that, um, perhaps more more so than many other places in the world, being characterised really on so many levels um, by constant change and reassembly. New Zealand, for example, is one of the most geologically active countries in the world, constantly disrupted and provoked by eruptions and earthquakes, uh, most recently uh, by the Hattabi eruption in 180 AD, which famously turned the sky red over Rome and would have literally obliterated life over large swathes of the North Island. New Zealand's also experienced a prolonged freeze and thaw events. At the last glacial maximum, around, uh, which was around 20,000 years ago, sea levels were about 120 metres lower than they are today. And this is significant because it means that most of the lowland ecosystems that we have in this country have formed uh, actually in relatively recent times. And because ecosystems don't tend to migrate as intact units, it it reminds us that many of the systems that we're apt to define as pristine or ancient now, uh, more often than not, are actually much more recent compositions. We also know that most of our fauna likely migrated to New Zealand by transoceanic dispersal in the last few million years. So most of our biota is not representative of Gondwana. Many of our more common species, our silver eyes, our fantails, our white-faced herons and so on and so forth, colonised the country only within the last few hundreds or few thousands of years. Now all of this uh, naturally doesn't give us the licence to promote further deliberate changes, but it should remind us at the very least that the changes that we have wrought actually aren't unprecedented. New Zealand's environment has been characterised probably, as I say, more than many other places in the world uh, by rapid and often violent upheavals. Keeping on with the notion then that the country was ecologically perfect, balanced and especially stable before people came along is in many respects not very accurate and not very helpful. And from a social perspective, educating people that our environment was perfect before they came along and that the only way that they can help is is to try to make it more like it was Uh, before they arrived is also, in my and many others' view, a really misguided and misanthropic strategy in the long term. Um, 